All right, guys, I uh, want to give you a preview of what I've been working on the last couple days. When I came back from my trip, I noticed that my contracts were working on the test RPC that I created, but they, but they weren't working on Geth when I tried to deploy them there. So I was having trouble debugging them, and so what I did instead was wrote code to help me, uh, or to let me, excuse me, run those tests against Geth. So to show you the way things were, I will uh, run the test RPC and uh, run the tests against that. So this is all basically the same. It's going to run really fast. The tests are, uh, the contracts are deploying or were deployed, and then it ran the tests and then and, uh, finished in about five seconds, which is great. Um, what I'm going to do next is uh, start up Geth, and so. What I need for these tests are some uh, different accounts. I've uh, given each of these accounts ether. E excuse me, e each of these accounts ether already. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and unlock all of them. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, so I don't mind a bunch of blocks. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run the test again. Now notice that I didn't change any code. It is just straight up pointing to a different RPC client and is still able to uh, run the test in sequence and, uh, and receive the same uh, outputs, assertions, and expectations. So it deployed the, contact, the, the contracts to Geth and now it's running the tests themselves. Um, what you'll notice is it doesn't actually run too slow. I don't know if you can hear um, hear my computer spinning up too much, but it's using pretty much all the CPU power that my that my computer has uh, because I haven't limited it. And when I do that, when I let it do that, I get you know an average of uh, one or two minutes for a whole a whole test run, which isn't so bad. Uh, grant granted, I do only have seven tests, so. Um, the tests do send a lot of transactions, but uh, the reason that this is slower is that each transaction has to be processed, and then the testing framework, the code that runs behind here, has to wait to, to wait for that transaction to be processed. And so, uh, to give you a quick example of what that might mean, if I go, uh, let me take a different test file up here. If I go to App Store, and we look at this line here. This is using the contract, uh, this is using Web3's contract abstraction. And so this function calls the create function on a contract, uh, which sends it as a transaction and therefore makes a transaction against the, um, against get. And so what this is saying is, is create a new app called test app. Uh, behind the scenes here, it's going to wait and this part won't be reached until that transaction has been processed. So um, when you send a transaction on the RPC, usually it just gives you a transaction hash, but that doesn't mean it's processed, it's still in the pending state. So this waits for it to be done pending and then moves on to the next step, which is what the test needs. The next step here counts the amount of apps in the what app factory. You don't have to worry about what an app factory is here, but it counts the number of apps and then after that call, it asserts that the amount of apps is what we expected. So you'll notice that the test ran in, in one minute, which isn't so bad. Um, there is one issue, which is a fairly big issue, uh, that running tests against Geth has that uh, the RPC, excuse me, the test RPC doesn't have. And that issue is sharing state. So unfortunately for for Geth and really any um, RPC client, any real RPC client, uh, each test affects the network that, that that RPC client manages. And so once one test is finished, it will have changed the state of, of the network. Therefore, when the next test runs, that state uh, affects whether or not the next test will pass. And so you'd be very careful to not have tests that conflict with each other. And the problem is, is that once you get enough, enough tests, that's gonna be very hard to avoid. And so right now I only have seven tests and I was able to change my tests around and avoid that by, for instance, in this case, creating test, you know, an app called test app, and then the next time creating an app called test app two, 
the next time creating an app called Test App 3. So right now they don't conflict, but um, they will in the future. And so the only way that I've thought of to get around that, which I haven't currently implemented, is to deploy a new contract or deploy new contracts for each test. And that's that can be quite cumbersome. Uh, notice that you know this took one minute. I'm sure this would take you know my my guess is two or three without even changing the amount of tests. But um, that means the the uh, every time you add a new test, it's going to get um, larger. So. Anyway, uh, I haven't solved that yet. I don't know if that's the right way to go, but this at least shows you some assurance or gives you some assurance that your tests are going to run um, in production or on customers' computers, customers, users, you know, anybody who's going to use the app. So uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Uh, happy to, to share some code or get something started for your project, and I would love to help out. Cheers.